Welcome to our review on the endocrine system. So the first thing we need to know about is that when we're talking about the endocrine system, we're talking about something that's going to communicate with chemical messengers. And the chemical messengers that we have inside our body are hormones. So if they ever ask you what a hormone is, it is a chemical messenger. So these hormones are made in the endocrine glands and they're going to travel through the blood in the plasma. So again, that was a common question in the past, was asking you how hormones travel around the body in the bloodstream is all they're looking for. Once these hormones actually reach a target organ, so the place they're going to have their effect, then they trigger a response in those specific cells in the target organs. One of the key things we need to be able to do here is to compare hormonal control with nervous control. So what I've given you in those two boxes are a few key aspects to consider with regards to hormones and the nervous system. So if we think about hormones, first of all, then they're fairly slow acting, but they last a long time. And the way that they're actually going to be working is as chemicals which are transported through the blood, which means they can target a much larger area. If we compare that with our nervous system, then the response is fast but it's short lasting. And the way that we transmit these is as an electrical impulse along the axon of the neuron, which means we can target very precise areas. So make sure that you remember the differences between hormonal control and nervous control. As with all things in science, we do need to bear in mind that there are of course exceptions to this. So what we find is that there are certain hormonal responses which can act more quickly. For example, adrenaline has a very fast reaction time. One definition that you do need to remember is that for homeostasis. So if they ask you what is homeostasis or define homeostasis, then what they're looking for is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. So that basically means that we're keeping the conditions within the body the same or within a narrow range. What we actually find is that we're going to use hormones to control some of the processes that need this constant adjustment. When we're thinking about the actual glands and the hormones here that make up the endocrine system, then we do need to know a little bit about where they come from and what produces what. So if we start at the bottom of the diagram in the middle there, then we've got the testes, which is obviously in males only, and that produces testosterone. As we go further up, we'll find the ovaries, which again is in females only, and they produce estrogen and progesterone. Coming a little bit further up, you'll find the pancreas, which produces insulin. And then sitting kind of on top of the kidneys there, we've got the adrenal glands, which produce the adrenaline. Further up into the neck, we find the thyroid gland, which produces thyroxine. And then into our brain, you'll find the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, which produce hormones that regulate the production of other hormones. So make sure that you can recall the names of these different parts of the endocrine system and the hormones that they produce. So you need to be able to label them on a diagram because that has come up as a question before. The last thing to consider then is what we mean by the phrase target cell. So when we're talking about the target cells, we're talking about the cells within the target organ that have got specific receptors on the membrane or in the cytoplasm for the hormone that will have that effect. So what we find is once the hormone has bound to the receptor, then the target cells produce a response. The key thing to remember here is that the actual target cells have these very specific shaped receptors for a particular hormone. So if you look at the diagram at the bottom there, you can see we've got hormone A is circular and hormone B is triangular. And then if you look at the cells, the one on the far left is the target cell for hormone A because the receptors there would match the shape of the hormone. The one on the far right is the target cell for hormone B because it matches the shape of the hormone there. And then in the middle, we've got a target cell for both hormones A and B because it has receptors for both of them. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can state the function of a hormone. You can recall the definition for homeostasis. 
You can name some examples of endocrine glands and the hormones that they release, including identifying them on a diagram, and you can describe the specific role of some hormones in the body.